In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Airmon NG to discover wireless networks around you. Then I'm gonna show you how to deauthenticate clients from a specific wireless network so that you can capture the four-way handshake, open up the four-way handshake within Wireshark, but also decrypt or hack the Wi-Fi password. Now, before we continue, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel if you enjoy this type of technical hacking content. I cover a whole bunch of hacks on my YouTube channel and a whole bunch of other technical information. So please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like this video if you enjoy the content and click on the bell to get notifications. Okay, let's get started. Now, the first thing you need is a Wi-Fi network adapter that supports monitor mode. I often get asked the question, why can't I just use my built-in Wi-Fi adapter? And you could if it supports monitor mode and injection mode. But this is my recommended or one of my recommended Wi-Fi network adapters. It's an alpha network adapter. I recommend this Wi-Fi adapter because it works seamlessly with Kali. Please note that Alpha are not sponsoring me to say that. This is just one of the Wi-Fi network adapters that I find really useful. Okay, so the first thing you need is a Wi-Fi network adapter. In this example, I'm using Kali Linux or Kali Linux if you prefer within a virtual machine running on this Windows 10 laptop. Now you could run Kali natively if you preferred, but in this example, I'm simply running it within a virtual machine on Windows. First thing you need to do is plug in the Wi-Fi network adapter. Okay, so now that it's plugged in, I'm asked by VMware, where do I wanna connect it? In my example, I wanna connect it to the Kali virtual machine. Now in a separate video, which I've linked here and below, I showed you how to get Kali up and running within VMware Player. That's what I'm using here. So if you don't have Kali Linux installed and running, then have a look at that video. Now that the network adapter is plugged in, I'm gonna open up a terminal window and I'm gonna use a command IP address to see IP addresses and interfaces on this virtual machine. This is what we wanna see. We've got a wireless LAN adapter at the moment, the state is down, but it's important that we see a Wi-Fi network adapter. You can also use the command iwconfig if you prefer, and that shows us that we have a Wi-Fi network adapter. At the moment, the mode is managed. We're gonna change that to monitor mode in a moment, but the first thing you wanna make sure is that you've got a Wi-Fi network adapter that's recognized by Kali. Next thing we need is a Wi-Fi network to attack. So for this demonstration, I've got a TP-Link router, which I've purchased. This is a TP-Link router that I'm gonna use simply for demonstration purposes. So this is a network that I own. I'm not attacking someone else's network. Please do not use the information that I'm sharing in this video for non-ethical purposes. What I'm sharing here is for educational purposes only. I have to say this, otherwise I get into trouble, so please bear with me. Only use this for ethical hacking purposes. Only attack networks that you own or have permission to attack. Once again, I'm attacking my own network here for demonstration and educational purposes only. Okay, so once again, IWConfig shows us that a Wi-Fi adapter is connected. What I will show you here is I do have this release of Kali. So CAT Etsy OS release shows me that I'm using Kali 2020.04. You could also use uname-a to see details of the Linux version. So once again, I'm using Kali in this example. Okay, so the next step is to run sudo. That gives us root privileges. We're gonna use mmonng to check for any conflicting processes and kill them we can see that this process was killed. Now, in your example, you may see a whole bunch of other processes that get discovered and get killed, and that's fine. Just make sure that you type this command so that you don't have any conflicting processes that interfere with what we're trying to do. Now, to make this easier for you, I've put all the commands below this video. So if you wanna follow along with what I'm doing, then please watch the full video. But if you need the commands as a reference, I've put them below. Okay, so once again, iwconfig shows us that the wireless network interface is in managed mode, but what we wanna do is put it into monitor mode by using the command sudo mmonng start wlan zero. We can see that monitor mode is now enabled. iwconfig shows us that the mode has changed from managed mode to monitor mode. 
You can also confirm that by using the command sudo m on ng. Notice the wireless interface is now WLAN 0 mon. Before it was WLAN 0, but now it's changed to WLAN 0 mon. Okay, so now let's discover the access points and hopefully I'll discover that access point behind me. To do that, we use the command sudo aero dump ng WLAN 0 mon. And as you can see, a whole bunch of wireless networks are discovered. So here are the various SSIDs or MAC addresses of the wireless networks. I'll make this a little bit smaller. And as you can see at the bottom here, various stations have been discovered. I've made the font really small. I'll press Control C to cancel that. So Control C to break, and I'll zoom in. The network that I'm interested in is this network, TP-Link F3FC. Notice it's using channel two, and that's the MAC address of the access point. So you're gonna wanna take a note of that. I've added that information to my script. So channel is two, BSSID is that. Scrolling up, we can see once again, channel is two for this access point. MAC address is that. I'll clear the screen, and what you could do is use the command sudo aero dump ng dash d and the MAC address to display only that access point. So we can see the BSSID, we can see how many beacons are being sent, we can see the ESSID or the name that we as a human would use. Now I could use a phone as an example to connect to that network. So I'll connect to that network and hopefully what we'll see is that a client has connected and there you go, we can see that this client has connected to that network. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel that and we're gonna use the command sudo aero dump ng dash w. This is the name of the file that we're gonna store the captures in. So I'm gonna store the cap file as an example to open with Wireshark in a file called hack1. The channel that we're gonna attack is two. The BSSID that we're gonna attack is this. And the interface we're gonna use is WLAN 0 mon. So in one window, open that up. And then in a second window, deauthenticate clients from the network. So just before I press enter, at the moment, notice we haven't got anything displayed here. We haven't captured the four-way handshake. But as soon as I deauthenticate clients, and this deauth0 means we're not gonna stop the number of deauthentications used against that access point. Notice a whole bunch of deauths are sent. On my phone, it's moved from one access point to the other. I'll try and connect back to the TP-Link network. And hopefully what we should see is that a four-way handshake is captured. Okay, so there you go. You can see the WPA handshake was captured. Client is not able to connect to the network, but we captured the handshake. Control C allows me to stop this process. So you could simply use that script as an example to deauthenticate everyone off a network if you wanted to. So that's another attack. You could do a denial of service attack against an access point just to stop anyone connecting to it. But in this example, if I type ls, what you'll notice is we've got this hack file captured. And what I could do now is use Wireshark to open up that cap file. So a whole bunch of information has been captured, but I'm gonna search for the handshake and notice here we can see message one, message two, message three, message four. So we've captured the WPA four-way handshake. We had some additional messages, but here's the full four-way handshake between a TP-Link device and my iPhone. So you could open up the Wireshark capture and have a look, but notice in message two, we see WPA key data sent from the iPhone to the TP-Link access point, and that's what we wanna crack. So the iPhone is sending authentication information to the access point, we're capturing that and that's what we're going to decrypt. Okay, so I'll close that down. Now at the moment, the Wi-Fi interface is still in monitor mode. So what I'll do is stop monitor mode. IWconfig shows me that the interface is back in managed mode. Be aware that when you put an interface into monitor mode, it'll break your internet connection you won't be able to use that interface for connections onto the internet or other places because it's monitoring traffic. Another reason to use a VM perhaps is in this example, I've got two network adapters. The 
Kali Linux virtual machine is actually using the Wi-Fi adapter of Windows to give it internet connectivity, but the external alpha adapter is in monitor mode. Okay, so let's clear the screen. So Alice once again shows me the files. Hack01 cat is the file that we want to use for cracking. And to do that, we're going to use this command, a crack ng hack101 cap. And the word list that I'm going to use is stored in user share word list rock u. So just to show you what that is, if I go to user share word lists, various word lists are stored in this directory. In Kali, you can actually just search for word lists and it will show you the various word lists available in Kali. And one of those is the rock you file. Now this needs to be unzipped. So you can use gzip to unzip it. And that's what I've done here. I showed you how to do that in this video. So have a look at that video if you wanna see how to unzip the file and use that word list. But that's the word list that I'm gonna use. So let's try and crack that password with the word list. And there it is. The password that I used was hello, hello. Now you might say, well, David, that password is too simple. This is just for demonstration purposes. The rock you word list has millions of passwords in it, actual passwords used by people. So what I did is just find a password in that word list and I configured this TP link network with that password. In separate videos such as this one, I showed you how to use a GPU to crack a non-standard password. I'll also create additional videos where I use a very powerful GPU to crack WPA pre-shared keys, that are non-standard passwords. But in a lot of cases, people use passwords stored in the rock you word list. Just because people are supposed to do something doesn't mean that that's what they do. Hopefully you're using a much better password than, than something simple like this, but this is a password in the rock you word list. For this demonstration, I once again configured that TP link router behind me with this password. So you can see this network has this password. This is the password of the 5G network, but that password I cracked using a GPU in two minutes as an example. So a password like that could be cracked. You should be using very long passwords. So try and use very long passwords with, with a mix of characters. That makes it really, really difficult and almost impossible to crack if your passwords are very long and they're a mix of a whole bunch of characters. Okay, but there you go. I've now shown you how to discover Wi-Fi networks, how to select one to attack, how to implement an attack to disconnect clients from that Wi-Fi network so that you can capture the four-way handshake. And then I showed you how to crack the four-way handshake. There are better ways, for instance, using a GPU and Hashcat to crack pre-shared keys. But again, I've shown you that in a separate video. I'm David Bomble. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I want to wish you all the very best.